everyone. Today I'm going to do part five of my tarot collection. This is my final part for my collection. So I am going to start with Modern Witch Tarot. Little guidebooks, little hardcover book, which is cute. I like this deck. I love the bright colours. I actually like the cardstock in this. I know a lot of people don't, but because I don't riffle shuffle, it works well for me. It's a nice take on the Rider Waite Smith, so because I don't work with a standard RWS deck. This fills that niche for me when I want to work with pretty much a clone. This is what I go for. <laughs> the little teeth. Reminds me of me, I got a little gap in my teeth, my little front teeth, just a little gap. first one modern witch next is the muse tarot by Chris Ann well, the first one was a lim limit on 11 deck greenbacks and I've edged mine in multiple pinkish sort of colors I haven't had this in my collection for very long I purchased it at Christmas time when Hay House were having a sale, 50% off decks, so I stocked up on some decks while they were half price. I didn't think I would ever buy this deck because of the the kings, how they're, vert how they're horizontal on this deck, because I don't like decks that change directions like this compared to the other cards I haven't really worked with it yet but I'm looking forward to I like to look through it because it's so pretty so many decks I need to work with that I'm dedicating the next next 12 months to work with what I have trying not to keep buying <laughs> it's so difficult to do and that was the guidebook Chris Ann book which is great next one is the Angel Tarot by Radley Valentine and the artwork is by Steve Roberts I've edged mine in green and the backs nice gentle deck Images are pretty. I'm finding now at this stage in my journey, I'm liking less and less the longer messages on the bottoms of cards. But for now, this one's not as long as some of Rally Valentine's other decks, so I still like it. Um, yeah. The borders are colour coded to so the majors are in this purple. The purple and the blue, so the swords and the majors are very similar in colour. And then you get the maroon for the fire suit. Green and blue, light blue. That's the Angel Tarot. 
Next is Sassaro Bio Tarot by Stasia Burrington. Little good guidebook, cute, and it's got enough information, which is good. The gold edging. I have the earlier glossy version of it now. You can get it in a matte. Oops. I've had it for a while this deck and I haven't used it much either. I love some of the depictions in the cards though. I like that tower. Knight of Cups. The best Eight of Cups, it's really cool. Eight of Cups is my favourite card in any tarot deck. So that is the Sassar Ibido. Ancestral Path by Julia Kuchio Watts. It's quite a big, big deck. It's gorgeous. And the text is by Tracy Hoover. US Games deck. It's a good, a good little guidebook. Just a little bit of information. Such a beautiful deck. I love the big cards. Big but not ginormous or anything, but the swords suit in this deck is my favourite. Such a gorgeous deck. I love having it in my collection. I like that judgment card. So that's the Ancestral Path. Next I have the Fairy Tarot by Dorian Virtue and Radley Valentine. And the illustrations are by Howard David Johnson. Good little guidebook. Color coded borders. I like the little fairy images. I don't use it very often. Definitely cute fairy tarot. Next is the new chapter tarot by Catherine Briggs. It's a Luminal 11 deck. I like how the the deck's open from the bottom. I've trimmed mine. Another little hard 
have a book. This is the size of the cards beforehand and now this now I've just trimmed the white border off. It's made it a little deck but I oh know the border for some reason was irritating me and that I fetched mine in purple even though it still has a border but it's not a double border. I like the little symbols in some of the cards as well. I just wish the guidebook went into detail about the choices of the images for the cards. It's sort of like just basic information on each, it's sort of like standard messages. That's the new chapter tarot. Next is Moonchild Tarot. It's a lovely deck. It's written and illustrated by Danielle Noel, and the guidebook's lovely. Beautiful edging. decks are so pretty and beautiful colors. love to be that person in the card. So beautiful. So like pinks and golds, blues, all those pastel -y colors. I like that eight of swords. Moon Child Tarot. Next is the Crystal Skull Tarot by Jessie Driscoll and the book was done by Rachel Pollock. I love this little deck. It's got a great little guidebook. I've edged mine in a lovely aquary sort of colour to match the backs. I think if you love crystals you may love this deck. I don't see a lot of people talking about it but it's just so cleverly done. Because you can use it as the standard RWS meanings or you can use also incorporate the energy from the crystal, each type of crystal that's in the deck. And I love crystal skulls so it makes that love even more for this deck. Look at that chariot, that's so cool. Look how clever that is. 
five of swords. She's used wool things to create the scenes as well. The scrabble pieces for the B and J on the pillars for the high priestess. It's excellent. I love it. It's the crystal skull tarot. Next is the animal tarot by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. Illustrated by Dan Craig. So the usual sort of guidebook for the Doreen Virtue Radley Valentine decks. This one for me has too much information on the on the bottom. I've been considering cutting off, like modding this deck, and just like either cutting it from underneath the image or just under the title. So I haven't decided yet, but if I don't cut it I'm gonna rehome it because uh, Information's too much. It's distracting, I find. But the images are cute. I like the animals in it. And the animals chosen for the magician, the unicorn, I think that's great. Colour coded borders for the suits. I think I will trim it because I do like this deck. I think I will just cut it underneath the animal so it has the name on it. It's very cute. So that's the animal tarot. Next, Medieval Europe by Vladimir Strenikov. This is a cool deck. Chunky. The guidebook is beautiful. It's like in a suede sort of texture. The guidebook is stunning. It's got a little little ribbon. It was it's fantastic quality. It's beautiful. I like the cool backs and the bronze sort of colour edge. I had a, a two chariots you can choose from in the deck. So some of the images in this make you laugh and just like it's yeah they're very very interesting let's just say that quirky and I really like the the orange on the titles it's cool Quirky fun deck. Look at, this, look at this page of swords. Oh, it, it cracks me up. So that is Medieval Europe Tarot. It's a fun one. Ember and Aura Tarot by Jamie Richardson. 
This deck is so beautiful. This is the Awakening Edition. There's a couple of editions. There's a little page for each in the guidebook. Beautiful pink edging and backs. Absolutely love this deck. The only thing that I don't love is the court cards, the little frame with just the image. That's the only thing I don't like about this deck. But other than that, I love it. Colors are beautiful. It's just stunning. I enjoy working with it. The cards shuffle beautifully. Like, look how well that Five of Cups is done. Simple, but on point. Eight of Swords. It's really good. It's an indie deck. I'm not sure if it's still available, still in print or not, but. Look at this deck all day. Ember and Aura Tarot. The World Unknown Tarot. Kim Cranes. This is the indie version. It's just got a little fold out. I bought it second hand and the person's coloured in the Major Arcana. So it's just a little fold out. These cards read really well, I find. I know some people love it, some people hate it. I think they're so clever. a great deck and I'm happy to have it in my collection. I considered getting the mass market edition in the pocket edition just for the guidebook because I'm pretty sure that the guidebook in the pocket edition is the same as the regular size just to have a guidebook but I don't know. I don't know if I need it but I'm still thinking about that. So that is the Wild Unknown. Dark Mansion Tarot, Tarot Teka Studios. I got the black edged one and the blue backs. Mine's the third edition, which has the nice rose petal cardstock. Even though it's rose petal y type finish on this one, it still shuffles quite well. I don't find it clumps as much as normal rose petal finish. And even if the decks that do clump after a while with use, they get better. No guidebook, but it's RWS. It's an awesome deck, I love it. <laughs> so cute.
so happy to have it in my collection. Dark Mansion. Next I have Stretch Tarot in this bag. This just has a little by J.E. Stretch. Just a little bit of information in the little booklet. Stars for the back. It's been edged. I don't think it comes with edging. I bought it second hand. I really like this it's collage it looks dark but it's I find it gives great readings and on point instant readings for me like I don't have to ponder over the cards for that long it has keywords on the miners So beautifully done. Stretch tarot. Next is the Urban Tarot. This is pretty cool. I love this deck by Robin Scott. And the guidebook's great. The cardstock's great. This one, I don't love all of the images visually, but I get really good readings with this deck on point. It's a good shadow deck for me. I use it for any readings, but it's good to for shadow. Some cards are really like and some cards I don't. Just but sometimes it's even if the artwork's not your favourite, if it gives you br brilliant readings, then it makes it so worth it. And the guidebook's really good for just explaining why he chose certain images for certain cards. This is the mass market edition, obviously, and it did used to come out as an indie. Nida Cups. That's the Urban Tarot. Two left for this video. Next is Star Child. I designed and written by Danielle Noel, another Danielle Noel deck. It's another good guidebook. Gorgeous edging. I love the backs on this one. I prefer this one over the Moon Child. I like them both, but I like this one better. I actually like the 
borders. There's an, another addition that you can get that's borderless. Rose petal ones. So these ones, they feel nice, but they do clump until you use it a bit. The colors are so beautiful. is the star chart and the final deck for this end of my tarot deck series Sentimental tarot absolutely love this one it's a low scary bio so it's in different languages it's got a great little guidebook by Fabio Lestrani those gorgeous backs I get great readings for this one too. This one's cleverly done. I like reaching for this deck. I find it very soothing, this deck. So if I'm feeling flat or a bit low, this one sort of gives me a hug. Even though it's skeletons and stuff, it's just gentle for me. That four of cups is so beautiful. Stunning. That tower card, it's just brilliant. It's so different to any other tower card that I've seen. Tomato Tarot. So that is all for my Tarot Deck collection series. Thank you so much for joining me.